So let's say you wanted to find the period of an orbit of some shape. It doesn't really matter now uh, what the shape is, but just in general terms, the most obvious thing to do would be to find an expression for the circumference and then uh, find an expression for the average speed of the planet. Well, it turns out that it's not easy to find an expression for the circumference of an ellipse and also not easy to find the average speed of the planet. So the second most obvious way to determine the period of an orbit uh, comes up in the next slide. So if you want to find the period of an orbit, here is the, the approach to use. You start with the total area within an elliptical orbit, and that area is pi AB, and you divide that by the rate at which area is swept out by the planet. And that we defined mathematically this way, dA dt. So we get the period is pi AB divided by dA dt. Now, uh, we found early on that dA dt is equal to h over 2. So, moving on, we now have this expression. And now would be a good time to square both sides of this expression here. So let's do that. And we get this. And to move forward, we want to find an expression for b squared. Uh, in terms of A and E. And we can do that by going back to our diagram of, a, of an ellipse and use the good old Pythagorean theorem, which uh, tells us that C, or AE squared, plus B squared equals A squared. So A squared equals B squared plus A squared E squared. And rearranging, we get b squared equals a squared minus a squared e squared, or a squared times the quantity 1 minus e squared. So that's going to be helpful. Let's just set that aside up here for now. And we also want to find an expression for h squared. Well, earlier in the presentation, we derived this formula. And we can square that. We get h squared equals the quantity 1 plus delta squared times g m d p. And um, based on sim a simple substitution, we, we, we know uh, that the quantity 1 plus delta squared we can rewrite as 1 plus e. So h squared equals 1 plus e times g m d p. So we want to substitute this in for b squared and this in for h squared, and we get this expression. Now, um, d p is something that we can uh, get rid of. Uh, and instead uh, express it in terms, once more, of A and E. And here's how we do that. Um, here's dP. A, of course, is this distance here, and A, uh, E is this dis distance. So clearly dP equals A minus AE equals A times 1 minus E. And so we can substitute that in for dp, and we get this expression. We expanded 1 minus e squared, of course, to get uh, these uh, two factors. And now several things cancel out. This 1 plus e cancels out with this one. 1 minus e cancels out with this one. Uh, we've got 1a in the denominator and a to the fourth up here, so that becomes 
a cubed. And so we're going to be left with 4 pi squared a cubed all over gm. And so there we have it. Uh, we've proven that the square of the period is proportional to the cube of the semi-major axis. And the constant of proportionality is 4 pi squared over gm. Same constant of proportionality that we found in the uh, case of circular orbits, which was a little bit easier to analyze. So there's our uh, desired result, and we have just proved Kepler's third law.